What's up, guys? It's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down eight routes that every single wide receiver needs to be able to run. So these routes are going to be on the more creative and advanced side of things. So I hope this video can help you out and add some new tools to your game. But also, fellas, we're going to be traveling out to 15 more states for two day long QB and wide receiver training camp. So we're going to be coming out to San Francisco, California, Orlando, Florida, New Orleans, Louisiana, Charlotte, North Carolina, Dallas, the DMV area, St. Louis, Honolulu, Hawaii, Boston, Cleveland, Austin, Texas, Seattle, Washington, Newark, Denver, and Los Angeles. So if you guys are local to one of those cities and would like to get some work in with myself and my staff of coaches, we are going back on tour this year. Check out that very first link in the description below to sign up. We sold out the last seven camps that we had, so we would love to have you out there, fellas, and help you improve your skills. Let's get started with this video. So now, first things first here, we're going to be talking about a fake throw by dig route. So what is a fake throw by? So let's play this full speed and then we'll break it down. So this is a great router from Michael Thomas taking an inside release on a dig route and catching this ball. So now let's talk about what a fake throw by is. So if you guys were coming up to the line and let's say you had to run like a 10 yard out route, right? And let's say you had a DB who was lined up outside shade, or maybe you start to attack him and he keeps the outside. You have to take what he gives you. That's something that a lot of wide receivers don't understand about route running is that you have to take what the DB gives you. If he gives you the inside release, you have to take it. A disciplined DB will not give up his leverage. So if he's outside shade, he's going to keep his leverage. So if you had to run an out route and he was lined up outside shade, what would you do? You'd put the brakes on and you would slip back underneath. Now, what a great wide receiver can do is he can pair his routes. He could pair his moves. He could pair everything together. He can make one route look like another route. So if you get an inside release on a dig route, a great way to get separation rather than just running up and maybe just sticking one time and breaking it off is to sell the actual throw by move, hence the name a fake throw by. So we get to the top of the break, it looks the same. We're selling vertical, we put the brakes on, we put our hand on the back of his shoulder, swat him by, and we get to that blind spot. Now you could take, you know, two steps, three steps, there's not really a set amount of steps to this blind spot, but we have to move my body to his blind spot to sell the throw by out route. It all comes from having different plans and knowing how to run routes against specific coverage looks, fellas. So the first route is that fake throw by dig. Now, personally, fellas, a lot of you will probably ask, well, could I use this on an out route? And think about the situation here, right? So let's say you, for example, had inside shade. Let's go back to the very beginning. Let's say we had inside shade press, and let's say we had to run an out route. You wouldn't want to do this on an out route. Here's why. Every time that you run an out route, is that a first read for the quarterback? Probably, right? A quarterback's not going to look at this out route and come back to it late because that DB who's right on your hip could pick that ball off and you're running towards the sideline, you're closing the space down on the field. A dig, a quarterback can look to the right side and come all the way back to the left, and you could still be on time with the pattern. But usually an out route is a quicker developing route, and the quarterback expects you to get out quick. So you would not do this on an out route when you have inside leverage and you took the outside release. You're better off leaning into them, maybe trying to stack, but we use this fake throw by on a dig route only to sell that throw by out. Let's play this thing again, full speed one more time. Great job by Michael Thomas working that throw by, getting to that blind spot, and then winning on this route. All right, so second example here is going to be a corner route when we have a DB who is sitting right at five yards, maybe like a more physical linebacker type guy. Maybe it's a zone coverage linebacker. How would you run this route? So the mistake that a lot of wide receivers will make, like I said, because before what I said, when a DB has a leverage, like let's say he has inside leverage, you want to take what he gives you, right? So that means you would want to take the outside release, but that does not mean just take off and run. Because anytime that you are running an outside breaking route, like an out route, a corner route, a comeback route, I think we can all agree that the QB needs some space to throw us open. So we can't just get squeezed to the sideline. So we have to attack his leverage. So let's play this full speed. So this is a corner against that like catch technique at five yards. This is a great example of this wide receiver closing space with the DB and making him uncomfortable. So when we have a guy who's right here, a physical type linebacker, a lot of smaller wide receivers are afraid of this situation because they're afraid to get rerouted. So what they'll do is they'll go up to this DB. There's two mistakes that guys will make. They'll go up to this guy, they'll attack his leverage, you know, because maybe they heard myself say that, or they heard their coach say that, whatever it is. But they will make this crossover move with way too much space between the two guys. They'll make the crossover move like right here at this yard line. So maybe they sell it. Maybe it's a good move like what this wide receiver does, and maybe we get this DB to jump. But at the end of the day, you still got to break this route off at 10 yards. So if you're right here, you got the DB to jump, you still got to get to 10 yards. And guess who has the better angle? 
the DB, the linebacker, the safety, who you didn't close the space with. So any route, fellas, anytime that you have that five yard off coverage, you have to make sure that you're closing the distance. We have to try to step on his toes, make him uncomfortable. So when I make him miss, I could restack and get skinny right away. Now, this wide receiver could have done a better job of that. He kind of raises his pad level a little bit, so he takes a wide angle, which can allow this guy to recover if we didn't get him so bad on the move. We want to, when we make this type of move, we want to be hip to hip with him. I want to make this cut, I want to drive, and I want to get directly over the top so he has no space to recover. Okay, so that's the first mistake guys will make is they won't close the distance enough. This receiver does a great job of closing distance, could just be tighter with the restack. Now, the second mistake, like I said, is they will take off and run. So like I said before, we have to take what the DB gives us. But if he's inside shade, he's there for a reason. He wants to take away the inside. He wants to force everything outside because the sideline is his help. So if you have a route like a corner, you need some space for the QB to either throw it on a line away from a safety, or you need some space for the QB to lead you if this guy's going to be trailing you in man. So you cannot just run. Because if this wide receiver would have just taken off and ran to the outside, this guy would have gotten hands and squeezed him all the way to the sideline. So even if he did get the corner route off, there would be no space. So fellas, one of the routes that you've got to know how to run is an outside breaking route against inside leverage about five yards off. You have to make sure we close the space, get into his cushion, and make him uncomfortable. Let's play this thing again full speed one more time. Great job by this wide receiver making that move. That is the second route that you need to learn how to do. We have six more that we are going to cover. So now, this next route is going to be called a peak back comeback route. So a lot of people don't know how to use this peak back move correctly, and that's what we're going to be talking about here. So this is C.D. Lamb, and he kind of makes this DB look a little bit foolish here. This DB falls. It's a hell of a route. So let's play at full speed. So he comes off, gives a little tempo change, pushes vertical, peaks back, and then you see how that DB goes down because he drops those hips so well. That is solely from the peak back move. So off the line, on every single route, fellas, anytime that we're running a comeback, especially a peak back comeback route where you add that peak back move, you have to make sure we're selling what? Selling vertical. On any route that involves that's not a fade, you have to sell the fade. So when he comes off the ball, he does this little tempo change because that skip is probably something he's done before on a fade route. Maybe this DB's guarded him before. Maybe it's been a backside play where it's a run play and your job is just to run the guy off and you've done this tempo change. He's seen it before. So when he sees this tempo change, he's expecting you to run full speed and sell the fade. So that's exactly what he does. Selling vertical, getting this DB to bail, comes down to selling with your upper body, running full stride, and running full speed. Those are the main keys that we have to emphasize. So when he's pushing a vertical, now he starts to peek back with his eyes. This is where a lot of wide receivers go wrong because they give the route away. The peek back is something everybody tries to do, but they fail. Because when they start to peek back, they start to lean back. And what happens when you start to lean back? Your stride gets shorter. You start to slow down. And guess what that tells the DB? Hey, a break is coming, right? So when you start to, when you get that peak back, I, I call it like it's a glance. You're just glancing over that shoulder because you need to maintain pad level and you need to maintain stride. Because when we break this thing off with this peak back, we need this DB to run full speed. We need him to think, oh shit, I got beat on the fade. I'm trying to recover. And when I can get him to commit and I drop my hips and his eyes are in the backfield looking for the ball, that is a ton of separation that we can get as you can see. So a peak back comeback, fellas, make sure that we are selling vertical and make sure when I look back to sell the fade even more so, I maintain a good pad level, I maintain a good stride, and I am running hard. Let's play this thing again full speed one more time. Great job by C.D. Lamb changing up that tempo, getting that DB to open up that gate, and then snapping that thing down to win on this route. All right, so now the next route, that was three routes. We're going to be covering five more, just like how we covered the first three. This next route is going to be a rocker step post route. So what is a rocker step? A rocker step is essentially rather than just cutting off of one foot at the top of the break, like doing a single like stick, if you will, you do like a double stick. You do like a one, two. So if you were running a post route, instead of cutting off of your left foot, you would go right, then left. You'd go one, two. That's how the cut would work. But how you sell this move is what we're going to be focusing on here. So this is Zachariah Branch. He's, I believe, a USC commit. He goes to Bishop Gorman in Vegas. And this is a textbook example of how you guys can use this rocker step. So when he gets over the top, he restacks. DB's trailing his back hip. That's exactly what why we use this rocker step. Because this DB is reading your hips. 
any disciplined DB, they're always taught to look where? Taught to look at the hips. Supposed to watch the hips of the wide receiver. The hips are not going to lie to you, right? So when he goes to make this break here and he goes to do this rocker step, we have to focus on throwing my hips into the break. So that's the first part of the rocker step. That's the second part. You see how his hips and his shoulders are committed and he's stepping to the left side. We're trying to make this look like what? A corner route. You see guys like Cooper Cup, Justin Jefferson, they love doing this move, especially Cooper Cup. The way Cooper Cup does it is very impressive. So when he does this move to the inside, look what that does to the DB. He's angled his entire body because that's where he's taught to watch. Everybody thinks watching the hips is going to solve everything, but as a wide receiver, if I can sell with my hips, I can be explosive. I can actually step and make it look like a corner that can get me plenty of separation. So something that you could do, fellas, like, you know, this is what Cooper Cup does. He'll run a route and he'll do like a corner route, for example, and he'll start off with a single cut and go. Then he'll do a post route and he'll do a single cut or no, he'll do like a rocker step where he'll go one, two, then break on the post. Then maybe he has to run a 10 yard out and he'll go one back two, back three and do a triple rocker step. It's just a pop, pop, pop. Three steps, two steps, one step. You got to have different tools at the top of the route, especially on routes like a corner and a post to sell it and get open. But make sure, fellas, when you do that rocker step, you are taking an explosive first step. That first step is pushing so you could step wide and your hips and shoulders can sell the corner route. Let's play this thing again full speed one more time. That is a textbook rocker step corner route here from Zachariah Branch. And that's something that we can all learn from to get a separation and to help us win. All right, so now next route we're going to be covering is going to be a fade route versus off coverage inside shade, whether it is zone or whether it is off man. So this is a question that we get asked a lot, right? So like maybe you're a team, you know, especially high school and younger wide receivers. You guys see this all the dang time. Um, you see, rarely see press, right? But when we do see press, that's why we talk a lot about press, is you want to be able to beat it, right? That's something that will stand out to a college coach. That's something that coaches want to see at the next level because you will see a lot of press at that collegiate level. But when you see this type of look, Let's say maybe it's cover three, where you got one safety in the middle of the field. He's got the deep third. You got this corner. He's got his deep third. But you think you could win on a fade. You can't just try to run around this guy. You have to use something called a vertical set. So a vertical set kind of builds off of that rocker step that we just talked about. So this is Kyle Pitts running this route. He's closing the space. Bam. Gives that vertical set to the inside to essentially, that's why they call it this, set himself back vertical. So when you guys are running a route and you have a guy who's in off coverage, any route, whether you're trying to attack his leverage, whether you're trying to attack an outside shoulder, an inside shoulder, you have to do what? You got to close the distance. You have to get into his toes. You got to get into his cushion. You have to make him uncomfortable because that's how we get a reaction out of him. So when I'm doing this route here, when Kyle Pitts is doing this route, excuse me, he's closing the distance and you see how he does this hard fake to the inside. That's what we call a vertical set. So all we are trying to do is to get this DB to stutter, get him to hesitate because all it takes is one false step, especially when we're running a fade especially if you have some speed to get over the top of him and win on this fade ball. So that is when we use this vertical set. Now, the same thing would apply as if he's in zone, whether he's squared up with me looking at me or whether he's facing the inside with his eyes on the quarterback or eyes on the number two receiver, you would still want to do this exact same move. Because if he's lined up inside leverage, we talked about this earlier, why is he inside leverage? To prevent the inside route. Doesn't want to let you run a post, doesn't want to let you run a dig. So that vertical set sells that inside post move. It sells like you're going to be breaking right in front of his face. So guess what he's going to do? His sole purpose is to protect that move, to protect the inside. So he's going to have to react. He has to honor that. He's not just going to let you run past him, but you have to make sure we close the space and you are selling with your upper body, just like that last clip we showed to Zachariah Branch with the rocker step, because that can get him to hesitate. I can keep my head down. That's super important after the vertical set, not looking back right away, because that will just allow the DB to recover. When you turn and run with your head back, you're, you're automatically slower. It's just like that peak back that we were talking about before. Keep that head down. Let's widen the distance. Let's get this DB by a couple of steps, and then let's look back for the ball so we can win. That is a textbook route there from Kyle Pitts. Let's watch the thing again, full speed one more time. Great job using that vertical set, getting that DB to sit to his leverage, and then being able to win on that fade. All right, so next route we're going to be talking about here is a 10 to 12 yard out route versus outside shade. So I know it's kind of tough to tell, um, but you can tell because this, these are the numbers right here. So you see the numbers and you see how this DB is lined up on the numbers and Justin Jefferson's inside the numbers. So this is a 10 to 12 yard out versus outside shade 
off man coverage where he's sitting at about 10 to 12. So, or maybe like eight to 10, I would say. So how do you run this route? What do you need to do here? And a lot of people think about this the wrong way because they're all so concerned with attacking the leverage, stepping on his toes. But really, sometimes you have to attack a specific shoulder of the DB. So let's play this full speed. So Justin Jefferson attacks, sets him up back to the inside shoulder, and then breaks on this out route because he gave himself space. This is no different than that corner route that we talked about. So you guys remember the corner towards the beginning of the video where we had the DB who was inside shade at five. Where was like when I had to run an outside breaking route, what did I need to give my QB? I needed to give him space to throw me open, whether it was a 10 yard out, whether it's a corner, whether it's a comeback, he needs space to lead me. So when I have to run a 10 yard out, but this DB's lined up outside shade right where I want to run, I can't just attack his leverage. So many people have this incorrect. They'll say, oh, a DB's outside shade. So because you have an outside route, you got to get to the outside. You have to take an outside release. That's complete crap. You don't need to take an outside release when it's uh, an outside route. You should be able to run every single route with an outside or an inside release. It's about how the DB plays you, not the given route. So when he's outside shade, if we just attack his leverage, what do you think he's going to do? And you see it from Justin Jefferson because he starts out by attacking his leverage. He's just going to weave and keep his leverage. You attack his leverage, he's going to keep his leverage. His sole purpose being outside shade is to force you inside because he probably has safety help there from a free safety. So to get this separation, I have to threaten him vertically because again, because it's off man doesn't mean that it's not man. It's still man coverage and no man wants to get beat deep. So if I can attack his inside shoulder and actually sell the route, that is what's more likely to get him to open up. That is what's more likely to get me space. Because now when I make this cut, yeah, I could get him to, I could get this guy to open up. That's no problem. It's getting out of the break, obviously. But when I attack that inside shoulder, I'm running with a good pad level. We have good stride. We're running full speed. This guy has no choice but to honor that. There comes a point in every single route where a DB has to honor the fade. He has to commit to the fade because he's not just going to let you run right by him. And if he wants to play that guessing game where he's just going to sit on the short stuff and it's not cover two, dude, we're going to take him on a fade at least at one point during the game. And that will start to get him to move. You got to be patient sometimes. So when we attack that inside shoulder, guess what? When I make this break, I could swat him by on the hip or on the shoulder. And now I have space for my QB to lead me. Imagine if we just forced it outside. Imagine if we just attacked his outside shoulder. He would weave, you would end up breaking, and you'd have no space with a DB right over the top on your hip. That is no good for a quarterback, especially on a timing out route. So that's textbook right there. So next route that you have to learn, how to run that 10 to 12 yard out versus outside leverage. It's one of the hardest things to do in the book, but if you know how to angle your stem, you know how to sell your routes. You should be able to get plenty of separation. Let's play this again full speed. Great job by Jefferson attacking inside shoulder and getting that DB to flip his hips. All right. So now next route we're going to be talking about here is a comeback and go route. So this kind of goes for every single double move, I would say. But I feel like a comeback and go is a great thing for everybody to learn because it can build. It can build off of a hitch and go. It can build off of a curl and go, a dig and go, an out and up. Every double move has some principles that you could take away from this specific clip. So let's play at full speed. So this is Antonio Brown. He takes the outside release, breaks on the comeback, gets those hips and shoulders downhill, and then wins on this route. So let's talk about it, right? This is the second to last route we are going to cover. So when he gets to the top of the break, hey, I want you to see something real quick, though. You see how he's starting to peek back and he's starting to lean back and watch what happens to his stride a little bit. His stride starts to chop it, chop a little bit. So just to let you know, when we're actually running a comeback, that's the example of what you don't want to do. But since it's a comeback and go, it works. So when he breaks to this comeback and go, look at how his hips and his shoulders commit to it. So when you guys are running a double move, like let's say it's an out and up because that's an easy one for everybody to understand. Everybody's been running that since the time they're seven years old. So when you do this out and up, when you break to the out, everybody loves to talk about the eyes. Oh, your eyes tell lies. That's the popular phrase that all the receiver gurus like to say. So when you look back with your eyes, but your shoulder and your hip are giving away the move, that DB ain't going to bite. At least a disciplined DB won't bite because he's not supposed to be looking at your eyes anyways. He has to be looking at you. He's reading your body language. That's what he's trying to read. So when you guys snap your eyes around, I'm not saying don't do that. I'm saying you got to bring your hips and you got to bring your shoulders with the eyes. Because when you can snap all of that, you could fully commit the upper half. You have some speed down the break point. That DB has to jump. Because you're running the comeback route first. That's what you got to think of double moves. Slant and go. Out and up. 
post corner. You were running the first move first. So he is running the comeback. And I know that sounds simple, but a lot of guys don't do it, man. They'll take choppy steps. They start to slow down. That's not how we do a double move. You have to commit the upper half, snap those eyes if needed, and that is what can get you separation. So that's why I wanted to include that, fellas. Come back and go is something I feel every wide receiver should be able to run, but you have to make sure the hips and shoulders get down the 45. And how you can do that, by the way, is when you decide to break down on this comeback, look at Antonio Brown's second step. You see how much it pivots? Because that's getting his hips turned. He snaps, pivots, hooks the third step around. Now his hips are out of the break. It's those little minor details, fellas, that make a big, big difference. Let's play this thing again, full speed one more time. Great job by Antonio Brown selling the comeback, pivoting his feet to get his hips and shoulders committed, which will help us sell the route. All right, so now, last route that we are going to cover today. I appreciate everybody who's watched this whole video. It really means a lot, guys. If you guys have any kind of feedback, any kind of content you'd like to see next from us, don't hesitate. Leave that in the comment section below. Now, we're going to have this press bail post. So this goes for any kind of inside breaking route against press bail, but mainly we're going to be talking about a poster from AJ Brown. Press bail is when the DB walks up like he is going to be in press pre-snap, and then he starts to bail out of there like he's in zone. You'll see it against cover three, you'll see it against cover four, and he most likely will be outside shade when he press bails. So if you have to run a post route, and let's say it was just like outside shade, like off man, let's say he was facing you, what would you do? Would you just run the post? No, because that DB would be right on your hip and he'd force you to his safety help. The whole reason a DB is outside shade is because he has help inside. The whole reason a DB is inside shade most, most of the time is because he doesn't have help inside. He's trying to force you to the sideline. So what we have to do with my post is we have to attack his leverage, aka the blind spot. So the blind spot is an area where this DB cannot see. The blind spot is where do you think right here? Here. That is the blind spot. So what A.J. Brown does a great job of, it's essentially attacking his leverage because he's outside leverage. Obviously, A.J. Brown's inside. This DB's outside. It's essentially threatening the leverage. So he comes off the ball. He closes the space, and you see, threatens the blind spot. He does this little, like, kind of rocker step move that we were talking about, hips and shoulders. You want to get this DB to feel you in that blind spot because all it takes is one little hesitation. But I attack him so he widens, so I have a bigger window for my QB. We have to be a quarterback-friendly wide receiver. If my quarterback doesn't feel confident that I can get separation in certain situations, he's not going to give me the ball. So we have to make sure that we give a bigger window. Because now you see when he catches this ball, who comes in? Safety. And imagine if we just ran the post. Imagine if we just took what he gave me and just ran. He would be right on that hip pocket and forcing you right to that safety. Now, again, when it's press bail, fellas, there's a lot of different routes we could run. You could run an out route. You could run a 10-yard out. What do you think you would do? Think of the Justin Jefferson clip. Just because it's zone doesn't change the concept of what route I'm going to be running. It's zone, I would attack his inside shoulder. My goal is to get him to flip his hips, think a deep post, think a fade, slip underneath him and run the out route. Same thing on a comeback. My goal could be here. Maybe I close space and then I go blind spot, then I snap it down, or maybe I snap it down at the inside shoulder. But when it's inside breaking, you got to dig, you got to post, you got to curl. Let's threaten that blind spot to threaten his leverage. Let's play this thing again full speed. So that is the eighth route you need to know how to run. It's a post route or an inside breaking route against that press bail coverage. All right, fellas, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. Always appreciate the feedback. It's always great to, um, it's always great to, hear back from you guys and get any kind of feedback from you guys but also fellas if you guys are located in any one of these cities that we are coming out to san francisco orlando florida new orleans charlotte dallas the dmv st louis missouri honolulu hawaii boston massachusetts cleveland ohio austin texas seattle washington newark new jersey denver colorado and los angeles check out that very first link in the description below fellas we'd love to have you out to one of our camps i'll see you guys next time